Welcome back to another episode of Blast and Masturbate. I'm your host, Father Frank. Today we're going to be objectively resolving jewelry, secrets, and art. Let's go meet our panel. Chaz, how you doing, my man? Oh, shit. What's up? What's up? John, how you doing, brother? What's going on, Frank? What's up, man? And today, our special guest is host of the Anomaly Homily podcast and featured at Limestone and 10,000 Less Comedy Festival, Tanner Oliver. How you doing, my man? Real good, man. Real good. Glad to be here. Hell yeah. All right, let's get this show going, boys. So... I mean, very, very, very recent. The LA Lakers won their title, man. You know, another NBA season in the books, another champion in the books. But when we're actually talking about those champions, does everyone on the championship team deserve a ring? And Travis, start this one off. Yeah, so 100%, 100% everyone deserves a ring. Like, you had your um, 04 Pistons, uh, one of the greatest basketball teams to ever have done it. And you have your, your Darko, M- Milacic. And uh, granted, he he was he was not as good as the rest of them. We could have got Melo, we could have got D Wade, but we we got Malachic. And I feel like it's it's easy to finger point. Like uh, don't, don't 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 give it to Malachic. But I think it, it like if you if you start doing that, where does it end? Like should we just only give the ring to LeBron? Like should we only give it to LeBron to AD? I feel like that's dumb. You played basketball, you made obviously, it to the NBA, you made it to the highest obviously. level, and you get that ring. So. Obviously, dude. There's guys on the team like Deion Waiters who get team who's gonna get a ring regardless. Like. You really don't care. Therefore, like, you didn't put any effort into this. You got guys who saw zero minutes in all of the playoffs. Literally all of the playoffs, bro. And yet they're going to get a ring. Like, what have you been injured the whole season? Why Why do you deserve a ring? You did not contribute to this. Therefore, you do not deserve You do not deserve it. The water boys, the towel boys, you do not get a ring. Okay? Assistant to the assistant of the, of the, of the coach, of the cheerleaders, you do not get a ring. Sales team, you do not get a ring. You weren't with me shooting in the gym, bro. You were not with me shooting in the gym. Therefore, you do not get a motherfucking ring. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they deserve it, uh, given the situation that they had to win under. Because, like, what? You're playing for a championship. Like, every, like you should be able to go out on the town every night like Allen Iverson and have just the ability in the air to wreck yourself. Or like fuck yourself up, like you know, like uh, like like Scottie Pippen, or like just like the Bulls or something. But they just got to be clean. You got to literally hide from a virus. You got to stay in this bubble. Uh, it's a lot to go dude, through. Um, dude, it's like I, don't I know. can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even like reiterate how much those players don't deserve a ring. Like when you're talking about football, offense and defense. Like if the offense puts up 50 points, but the defense allows 70 points. Like, obviously, you're not going to get a ring. The same should go vice versa. If the offense puts up 70 points and the defense happens to stop some people, then I, I think the offense should, no, uh, should get the ring and the defense shouldn't. The, the defense should not get the ring, bro. It's still the like, – what? You, what? That's a it's, negative point. The defense, uh, defense dude, on, keeps on, you on, on a final drive, scoring. On a final drive, if I have to do a final drive because you fucking – did some bullshit and allowed them to score easily. Like I'm doing wow. a final drive in the under the last second because of you. Like we were winning. I don't know, man. Like, okay, I think they deserve it just given the situation that everybody was under. You got like you got you have everybody and their mom just like oh you know uh, uh, is is LeBron the goat? Is LeBron the goat? And given that we started 2020 with the death of Kobe Bryant, yeah, yeah. They do yeah. deserve it, and like I, on the other it. end of it, like you have like like Charles Barkley and 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 niggas like that who like uh, what who didn't get a ring, and like they're they're good, and like they didn't get one. So like, should should you get a ring if you play this whole time? If you if you if you're as good and then you didn't win because the luck of the draw was the opposite. I feel like it's just the luck of the draw. If I come to I am, if I come to L A Fitness and I'm on a team and like there's like a garbage garbage nigga on, but we run the court and we won however many games in a row. I feel like he he still he still even if his his job is to do nothing and let us do something. Then it's like that's still your job. You're 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 doing your role. If, if you if I add another so, a star player, he might, just, he might fuck so up the dynamic. Know, in that scenario, you're usually that guy. So I don't know how you're defending that point. Dude, Frank, anyway. what about so though, when not, I came back 11-5? 11-5? All right, we're not gonna talk about that. I saw I did see that live, but that no, that's when I asked. I asked you to what end? You know, does the film guy get a ring too? 
Does the guy that put an ice in the ice baths? Does he get a ring too? No. I mean, the, where does this deserve? Now exactly. you're reaching. You're so like, reaching. You're reaching. You're reaching. He didn't contribute yeah, just as much like as, the, as like you know the twelfth <laughs> dude on the bench didn't contribute. I, my leg was broken all year. I couldn't even hoop. I wasn't even at the game sideline with y'all. I was at the crib. But I get a ring? Come on, bro. It doesn't matter. No. It's still the, it's it the lottery. Matter. It's like the 12th guy Maybe on the bench. He ordered Jimmy John's for everybody. John, you ever think about that? Just, he could be the first round draft pick. Oh, you got to start Y'all some, y'all some, some participation trophy ass nigga. No, y'all some it's, participation it's trophy. The everybody gets a trophy. That 12th man could have been the first round. He could have been the first round draft pick from last year and he just tore his ACL. But he's a fucking and then scrub, he, but he's just a scrub. Because he's injured. Hey, hey. He's there for a reason. Yeah. He moved his family over there. Like he's, Zero like he, points. He, he, if I get in, if I go, if the coach subs me in and I get zero points, then what does that mean? I'm a fucking scrub. I get zero. That nigga couldn't, didn't even get subbed in and he got zero points. So but they're, you, they're okay, of equal you, value. They don't deserve it. If they you don't played, it, if you bro. played these twelve minutes and you got zero points, then that does, that that's the, you still contributed because LeBron got the ball in those times. You could have had another better another better player who would have maybe took the t- time away from LeBron. You're and then, and then, no, and then and then it could have it could have cost him the game. So I feel like not playing good could also contribute to to victory. So Darko Malacic when he when he came out there and he. And he did what he did. I feel like that helped us, and that 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 rallied us up because we like this whole ass what's nigga the can't score a bucket. Then what's that's the difference between a, the value? What's the difference in value between an injured player and a bum? We would have never won that championship without Malachis. I tell you that right now. Because you, you, you tell me right now, when, if, if, ben, if Ben Wallace and Rasheed Wallace were talking on their own about that nigga, like debatable. Uh, no, okay. Don't debatable. you think they're like they're 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 blood right, yes, right, talking guys, about that nigga? And the rest like, here. All right, that then I'm a defense. I'm a D these niggas up. I'm a throw. I'm a I'm a, I'm a choke Ron Artest and start the malice at the palace. Like there would have been no malice at the palace <laughs> all right. without Dark. All right, guys. Hold on. We got we got to wrap this one up here. Uh, we do want to go on the table here, get a final word in, and I want Tanner go first. Final word. Uh, my final word is, hey, uh, they deserve it. LA needs it. LA been, LA's been, LA's been on fire. Yeah, I don't know if if you know that, but LA just it's as as a city, it shouldn't exist. There's no way you can get water to it without trucking it in. All right, it's it's totally man made. Uh, so is the NBA championship. Why the fuck? I don't know, but here. I think given the situation that the world is in right now, everybody needs a boost. L.A. on fire. Kobe's dead. Just, I mean, <laughs> fuck. They deserved it. Fuck it. They deserve it. That's what I think. Jeez. Wow. I mean, every Kobe reference is like a stab to my heart here. But, yeah, um, I'm, working, I'm working the emotions. Yes, I am. I'm Oprah. <laughs> and, uh, John, final word. You guys ever stuck your thumb out on the side of the road? Never. And just got into a car and someone just took you to where exactly you needed to go. That's exactly what these bums like J.R. Smith do. They just get on a good ride. They just caught a good thing rolling down the road, hitched a mm-hmm. ride, and all of a sudden they made it to the the destination, the, the apex of pinnacle of sports. When you didn't fucking deserve you didn't earn it. You were just at the right place kind of at the right time. Travis talking about this lottery shit. I don't want to hear it, bro. They're bums. Keep the jewels in Africa. Keep the diamonds in Africa. You do not need to keep making these rings for these janitors. And uh, t- Travis will probably give a ring to the to the to the homeschooling tutors and everybody if it was up to him. But obviously these dudes don't deserve rings. And uh, yeah, shout out to AD and LeBron. They should get like five rings where everybody else gets gets kind of gets to look at them. You know. I want to give Bronny an ounce. I just say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come home and whooping that ass. <laughs> and Travis, final word. Yeah, it's just a celebratory thing. Uh, he mentions all these other guys, but we, we talk about the guys on the team. We know we're clearly talking about everybody on the team. So I, I think it's just a celebratory thing. And, like, if you, if you go to college, like, nobody says that you can't buy the class ring if you graduated with a com arts major. Like, you went there, have fun. Like, it's not like... That the rings argument never. Bill Russell was never in the argument for best player. Neither is Robert Ory. You are on a team, but you still you won. It's a fun celebratory thing. Get your ring. And that's it. They you're not the best. You don't get an MVP. And you're just you're just on the team. Malachis was was he did what he did. So he Milicic. Malachis is the best twelfth man to ever twelfth man. Darko Milicic. Okay. Well, looks like I gotta give this round to. Everyone on the team does not deserve a ring. John wins round one. Oof. Racism. Danny Green don't deserve a ring. Nigga could get a ring. Pop. <laughs> Let's keep it moving here, boys. So, yeah, you know what? 
it's so true though that your home is like your home man like that's where everything is you grow up so many great fond memories there but also also some traumatic memories can happen there pretty scarring memories so what's worse finding something fucked up in your kids room or your parents room and i'm gonna have tanner start this one off kids room because okay. your your parents they make their own decisions they're grown you find some sex shit in there good they're still fucking that means the every, the bills are getting paid for you know uh no nothing's about the nothing terrible is about to happen nobody's about to drain the family swimming pool because your parents are fucking honestly it's a good thing they might open it up next season right but like you know there's a difference like finding something sexy in your in your in your uh, parents' bedroom, and then finding something sexy in your daughter's bedroom. Like, who is that for? Who the fuck is that yeah, for? Yeah. You know? Like, I want her to be, like, comfortable enough to, like, talk to me about that, but also, like, what kind of avenues did you go through? Did you just buy it off Amazon like a basic bitch, or did, like, your friends make a movie out of it? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Be, be, that, be that as it may. There's, like, there's, that there's as dark it may. shit. Like, there's it, just dark shit associated with it. You know what I mean? Like, like okay. No, like... It, what? At least you can. At least you can snap your kids out of it. At least you can snap your kids out of it and be like, "Hey, you can, you can." If you stop met kids, them, like, they're resilient. Amid. They're bastards. They come from you. But if they're if they're really little and like you see some like your kids taking shits in his toy box, you're gonna be like, "Dude, little Johnny, don't fucking do that anymore." You can that, you can easily you? prevent them them the make <laughs> Johnny. Fuck you, Frank. Little Frankie, little Frankie, quit shitting in your toy box. But I mean, um, you can you can kind of you can mitigate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no all you got. first of all, you you got no you got no business being in your parents' room. You're in their house, so like you have no business being there. So if you go in there, you find some shit. You won't get your ass beat anyway. So it's like you traumatize, and then they see you doing it. You get your ass beat, so it's double. If I go in the kids' room and find some shit, this is my house. So I mean, it's my room. What I say, so you black should, parents, you got, you got, boom. You got, you got, you got Just nothing no, is yours. You got no business putting anything. So it's, it's my copy. A good night. I deserve, yeah, exactly. I deserve to see all the fucked up shit, and then we gonna get you together. But you know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> God damn it, Frank. All right, no, but yeah, you know, yeah. We're going to get you together. I mean, I guess I see where you're coming from, except for that, like, you don't want to find, like, a secret sex dungeon in, in, in your parents' room. And, like, imagine imagine if you found, like, some silly voodoo shit in your parents' bedroom versus you your kids. You found voodoo like, shit? Yo, that means you're like, magical too, B. What's up, no, Harry Potter? Come no, on. No, I mean, I mean, like, motherfucking, you're going to take it away from your kids and be like, hey, stop that. Versus your parents are going to be like, bro, what the fuck is going on? There's nothing you can even do to stop it. Like, if you're finding something in your parents' room, it's, it's way scarier because you're like, bro, what the fuck am I a part of involuntarily versus, like you said, black parents, they're going to come in, hey, bring your ass over here. And that's going to be the end of that. No, you feel if, me? If, if you find a gun in your parents' room, it's like, all right, they want to stand their ground. If you find a gun in your kids' room, Thievery. it's like, what's yeah, he about to go? What's he, who, what's he about yeah. to go? Like, what's he Thievery. About to go? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you learn a whole bunch of shit about them. Like, the parents, like, they're already who they are. The kid is like, oh, it's you learn something that's like, oh, what the fuck, little little Johnny is the, not the not yeah. the normal normal. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the person you were gonna be at 25. So if there's a gun in your room at 15 and it's there for 10 more years, you're gonna be the one, man. You're gonna be the one. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like no, it's I, way worse to find out that your parents are part of like some cult shit that you're all of a sudden being brainwashed into that you had no desire to be a part of in the first place. Like they have way more control over the household, which means if you find some shady shit and you try and question it, they're gonna be like, What the fuck was you doing in my room anyway? It's and already set even, in stone, man. It's happening right then. Like, what if what if you walk into your kid's room and you just see a glass dildo with a face on it and you're just like, What the fuck is this for? But you ignore it and then like 20 years down the road, your kid founds the church of, like, the, the church of talking dildos, the church of glass dildos. This is beyond spaghetti monster shit, John, all right? And, yeah, and I feel like the kid's more I, likely... I the, so. the, the kid's more likely to ignore it and suppress it, like, if, if he sees him. The, the parents, got he, he, he they gotta bring it up. They're gonna talk to each yeah. other about it, and that, that's, that's not gonna go away. So the kid, at least... 40 years later, like, it's going to fuck him up. But the, the parents, like, what the fuck am I raising right then and there? And then, like, there has to be a whole talk. There has to be a big thing. So it's way yeah. more fun. Yeah. Like, it's Come not going to go away. Way more what, fucked up. What do you think Osama bin Laden's kids did when they found, like, an AK in dad's room? They were like, well, dad's not in construction. I know that for sure. That just anyway. solidified what they already, <laughs> their assumptions. Like, anyway, <laughs> I know that for sure. I mean, shit. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the principle. Parents are supposed to check up on their kids. And kids, if they see something fucked up in their parents' room, they're like... Ah, I'll ask it when like they're in a chair and can't hit me. You know, like yeah, that's exactly. that's that's what it is. <laughs> exactly. 
But they're gonna find out anyways because they're okay, gonna like okay. the, the the little booby yeah. trapper. It's gonna be a little bit off, and then they're gonna be like, "Were you fucking around in my room? In my closet?" They're not gonna say the specific thing that they have. <laughs> were you in my top drawer? Were shit. you in my were you in my sock drawer? <laughs> and then no, well, you, know, you, know, you gotta go. Good. You gotta go with the saying now and then. Like now is for children. Then is for parents. Now I have to know why that's in your room for kids. Then is just like, hey, you remember back when? And then you know you bring it up. Like you know, I don't know. I. <laughs> Remember was, that time? What, what, was was costume, what was that costume? What were those ghost <laughs> costumes with the pointy helmet with the pointy hat? What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> why was it a baby size one? What did you do to me? <laughs> well, see, son, we tried to make our own Dr. Manhattan, but we fucked it up. We fucked it up real bad. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, all right, boys. We gotta wrap this one up here. But first, let's go around the uh, the table here for a final word. And John, start this one off. Final word. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously it's. I'm sorry, bro. He had me with that last one. Um, yeah. So parents' room, like you said, the thing, the the consequences are just far more extreme there. And there's nothing you can do if you find some fucked up shit. You're in you're in an involuntary situation. Like if your parents is drug dealing. Like I guess you just you just part of the drug dealing house now. Like you tra you you all of a sudden you trapping out the bando. Like if they might have wanted to to hide it from you, but lo and behold, they got twenty pounds of yay and five million dollars stuffed in your mattress. Like you you've been sleeping on money all the time and you didn't even know what was going on. So you know they be stuffing shit in the mattress, stuffing shit in the attic, stuffing shit in the oven, and you just you thought you know what I'm saying they told you to stay in your room after a certain hour. It's random people come and knock on your door. It's because they serving serving the fiends. And you didn't even know what was going on. So obviously it's way more fucked up for the parents to be on some bullshit than, than, the, than the kids. Because the parents always nip the kids' bullshit in the butt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. He wants to you know, keep yeah. it in the family business. You know? Keep it in the family. All right. Or that. And... Or that. <laughs> and uh, Tanner, final word. My final word, uh, like I said, uh, it's more fucked up to find something in your kids' room. Because, like, your kids are supposed to to bury you so their shit goes with you to the grave for example uh my uh all right this is, this is a little fucked up but i won like this like vibrating cookie monster toy at a carnival mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my female cousin took it from me when she was 13 and she would go in the dryer and put the pair of shoes in the dryer and then also i would just hear the cookie monster toy vibrating in there and it took me until Ooh. I was about maybe like 16 to realize, Ooh. oh shit, she was like using the laundry, like the dryer as a base to come, <laughs> and then also Cookie Monster to finish. So, yeah, Ooh. kids, kids, I've never had a parent kids. just like, hey, let me have that Cookie Monster toy so I can, yeah, like, no, that's, it's no, kids, kids, for sure, yeah. Because they'll steal your stuff and come on. <laughs> I don't expect a real life story. That that was a very uh can you, see that, I'm, can you see that I'm broken about it? it? I don't even know where it is. <laughs> what? I don't know where it is. He's just covered he's, he's just in a trash trash fucking he's just covered oh yeah, it's done. It's done. Well all right. Uh and Travis, uh final word. Okay, well my, my great great grandma on my on my niece's side, um she also had a. I don't know. She went. She also went to a carnival. You wouldn't. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> it may be the same carnival. Well, uh, was the carnival in Wixom? No, but uh, you know, I, I would just say that, like, I think for the ability to suppress uh, fucked up memories is is easier on the child than it is on the parent. So, like, if the kid sees a dungeon or whatever like that, he's like, all right, I'm. Just, I, I don't what? see it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Parents I don't. Pay I, for I'm therapy. pretending like I don't want to see this. But the parent they got to address it right away and they got to tell tell the the other parent and then they got there got to be a whole thing going on with it but i just think it's way more fucked up to find something in your kids room because first of all it'd be in plain sight almost plain sight where it's barely under bed but it's sticking out and then but then you have to have the conversation you can't just ignore it so it's, it's way more fucked up the kid can obviously suppress it and then he has to deal when he's grown but then i hopefully they'll be dead by then so well Thank God you're not a psychologist, but um, <laughs> I'm, a I'm a reverse psychologist. <laughs> Doctor, why does my little boy's room smell like saltines? He's coming. He's coming. <laughs> you'll never be able so, to be anything. You'll never. You'll never make anything out of yourself. <laughs> reverse psychologist. Well, looks like I gotta give this round to. It's more fucked up to find something in your kid's room, and Tanner wins this. Wow. Thank you. Tanner. <sighs> 
I know racism Canada. when I I know racism when I see it. <laughs> All right, Millet Shaker, what? Millet, Millet, <laughs> Millet, 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 Millet Chicken. chicken. <laughs> Million Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody, you know, when you're growing up, you always want to find that special skill, that hidden talent. You know, what do you want to do when you grow up? So when you aspire to do something, you're striving to be something, like, I don't know, what should you go for? So what takes more talent, being a rapper or being a musician? And John, start this one off. Obviously, it takes more talent to be a rapper. I mean, have you heard the bars? Have you heard the bars of, like, Lil Baby, of Drake, of, like, you know what I'm saying? All these guys, like, they, the music really wouldn't even be shit if it wasn't for the lyrics. Like, everybody could make a tight beat. I can, everybody been doing that shit since motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, back in the lunch table. Everybody can do that. But everybody couldn't rap, bro. Everybody couldn't rap. And the beat ain't shit without the rappers. So, I don't give a fuck what kind of yeah, flute you're playing. If you play a violin or if you play the drums, I don't care because nobody's going to listen to that shit. The Beethoven days are over, bro. Who's Put beating, that shit in the system. Who's, but uh, the nigga beating on the table, the nigga's not rapping a cappella. You need the nigga doing that shit on the table. And, like, if you go back to the, the the main beat in my sixth grade, everybody's doing that shit on the table, the clips grinding beat. Does anybody know any you of the can rap. Yeah, but does you anybody know any of the actual words for the it's song It's called freestyling. No, but do you freestyling know Freestyling is just as cool. It freestyling I'm saying that, is just that as cool. Beat, the beat is too good. Nobody even knows the Let, words. Let's be this. civil, boys. Let's right. be civil. Travis, go on. <laughs> Trinidad James, gold like gold on my chain, gold all on my watch. Don't believe me, just watch. Nigga, 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 nigga. Versus dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. That nigga was blind and like eleven years old. Like, come on, like, you couldn't play dun 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 dun. <laughs> Weezy been rapping since he was like fifteen, bro. Come on, dog. Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. You want to talk about blind? Uh, hold up, John. Tammy, you've been really I... quiet. What do you got to say? I feel like rapper is more talent because you're making something from nothing. Like, mind you, rap Bars. came from rap came from like Harlem and all these places that like New York politicians were like, let them fucking die. All right. Which, let's be honest. I mean, if you really look at it from a skew point of view, Republicans are responsible for the rise of rap. All right. They stuck us in a shitty situation with no musical instruments, sometimes no power. We were like, boom, bah, preach. Boom, boom. So, you know, just block parties and shit. So, yeah, I think it requires more talent. Also, you got to, like, prove yourself all the fucking time. Like, exactly. Just, so many people were just like, come on, Drake, exactly. drop the curly hair. And he was still with it. With the, I mean, Aston Martin music, it still holds up. It's been nine years. I don't know. Exactly. It's like, how many, how many cover bands do you see at, like, these festivals? How many dopes do you see, like, teaching music class to your second grade son? Like, all these musicians are doing nothing with like nobody is gonna pay to see a mediocre rapper or a shitty rapper but for some mm. reason like motherfuckers who who get on a goddamn who play instruments feel like they have the need to get paid like you're not that good you're yeah, not okay. even that have good you, I'll, I'll, you, say, I'll ever... say this i'll say this all right for a musician i feel like it's like a compliment when somebody covers your song have you ever seen anybody like like you know like not like a remix but like a completely different artist just take like like if somebody was just like oh i'm just gonna uh uh just redo passion fruit by drake in a different just different key different everything no god damn it no just like exactly. it's, it's, it's it's a it's a but it's drake under- redid i like to cha-cha and did and did uh, call me on my cell phone i feel like if you heard of Chinese people, they have their daughters practice the violin for like 85 hours a day. I feel like rappers don't Dude, do that. Rappers, they, they, be, rap, they be on promethazine but, and they come in the studio rap, and then they one take that shit. If we're talking the average musician. You're talking about av- little Yachty. Like no, okay, but I'm saying, but okay, raps cannot be replicated. the average rapper versus the average musician. If you know how to play an instrument, you're better than most niggas who say they Get rap. Get the fuck out of here. Most of the niggas that rap, say they rap just rap go to the studio. Rap cannot be replicated. Rap cannot be replicated, whereas all it's like just like playing PlayStation. You hit up, up, down, down, left, left, right, right. All you have to do on the saxophone is hit A, A, B, B, C, C. And you're gonna sound exactly like the nigga who made it. Like versus on rap, like he said, you, you nobody's gonna see somebody cover someone else's song versus you hear the same dun 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 from everybody else. You can do that, I can do that, he can, but we all can't fucking rap, bro. Yeah, yeah but to, be the, to being the best of the best is maybe a little bit harder, but to be the average, most rappers are garbage, but most. Average music players are are, are, are most trash. average music players are way better than average average rappers. Trash. Average, I'm who's average the rapper. last? Who's the last? Who's the last SoundCloud clarinet player you heard of? I'm glad who's you asked. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I, you, you mean you mean Squidward? <laughs> I think 
like, okay, uh, I think it's better. Uh, it requires more talent to be a rapper just because given the nature of rap, like you can improvise and it's still good. Like give, uh, for example, Biz Marquee. He wasn't supposed to sing that part. Like you say, he's just a friend. Or you, say, he had a female vocalist that was supposed to come in the studio that day, but she got in a car wreck and was like, "I can't make it, Biz." And he just was like, "Well, fuck it. I don't want to pay for more studio time." You, you got what I need. and that was a fucking classic. Okay, it was well, goofy okay, as well, fuck. Okay, <laughs> but it's okay well, I feel like that—that's a whole other argument. That's that's just black people versus not black people. Of course, ah, black people are the best artists. Come okay, on. Okay, well, then, the okay let's 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 go. Let's go, Jeez. Jimi Hendrix. What about Jimi Hendrix versus Lil Yachty? I, I, I feel like an average tier rapper, uh, mu- uh, rapper versus a um, music motherfucker who could play the fuck out of some shit. I feel like you just went black. Like, of course, black is gonna be better. At eh, art Jimmy's stuff. dead. Yachty still got some years to improve himself. So uh, Tupac's dead too. So there's Tupac garbage. So <sighs> I'm more of a Biggie guy. I, that's, there, I said it. <laughs> Biggie's dead too. So are is, are they both garbage? No, they're not both garbage. You become but, garbage the day you die. <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I, I, uh, like, <laughs> that's just science. Yeah, this, but, I don't uh, know. It's just, that's just, that's just the way it is. Fuck. <laughs> I hate to quote okay. Trump. Gross. <laughs> uh, anyways, I say this is actually a really, really close, uh, close point differential here. Only about a one point for a uh, lead right now. But I want to go on the table for a final word. And I'm going to have John go for his final word. Hey, you want to stop playing that fucking weak ass guitar, you shitty instrumental it's musician, a uke. It's wannabe a uke. motherfucker? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Um, he doesn't have any anyway, he before any I was rude, rudely points. interrupted, look, there's guys in the world out here like Big Sean who, when they run across a Kanye West, boom, they just spit bars and get a chance to become famous. Nobody ever goes up to, I don't even know, Beethoven's grandson and is like, hey, uh, and Beethoven's like, hey, bust out this violin verse real quick and First of all, the motherfuckers, no one carrying around a violin or a piano or a xylophone. So therefore, no one gives a fuck about you, bro. Like, if you if you can do some shit, do it right now. You got bars? Drop the bars right now. I don't want to wait for you to set up and put your weed, the reed in your saxophone and all that nonsense. Like, no one got time for that. No one's trying to hear that shit. When you go to the club right now, you're not trying to hear Bach and Beethoven's Symphony the Fifth. You're trying to hear some baby, some little baby, some Drizzy in the club. And you talk about age, Weezy the best rapper to ever do it at a young age. So, you know what I'm saying? Weezy F Baby. Okay. The motherfucking Carter. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. And uh, Travis, final word. Yeah, I mean, I think some of it doesn't take very much talent at all. I think a lot of it is just like uh, you're getting pushed out media-wise. And it's like somebody wrote the song for you. Somebody produced it for you. Somebody made the beat. And you're just coming in there and you're just saying jibber-jabber. Or you're saying the jibber-jabber somebody wrote for you. Music, you have to practice outside of being in the studio recording. Rap, a lot of the average tier rappers just be coming in and just saying whatever, off lean. So, I mean, if you need lean, if you're able to do one on lean, obviously that doesn't take as much talent. Okay. And Tanner, final word. Uh, I'd say it requires more uh, talent to be a rapper just because of the amount of times that you have to prove yourself. Uh, there's really like no, there's, there's, there's no school for it. You can't go to school for rap. You can go to school. Hey, man. Uh, you, there's like a conservator. There's no conservatories for bars. All right. Like it has <laughs> to come from like, somebody has to be like, somebody has to give you the nod. It's like getting a, a dope pair of sneakers where it's just like, that's it. That's it. That's that, that's that chef's kiss right there. Right. And then I feel like just as a culture, uh, I feel like rap I don't want to say it's like more inclusive, but if you're very good, you can rise to the top better. And also, I mean, there's really like, I don't know, there's when you're like a musician, like a a musician, there is a chance for you to like fall off more. Like, for example, when it came out that Alicia Keys was seeing Swiss beats on the side, the entire music industry was just like, Hmm, she plays piano. Bye for five years, right? I'm very sure if like Alicia Keys rapped, eh, wouldn't have been a big deal. <laughs> Fuck it. If Car- hey, look, look at Cardi B, hey. she might hop on, like shit. She's fine. She's fine. I don't know. I went. How long on. we get? How long we get? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I do like that. Some good points there, made Tanner. Forty-five minutes. Almost enough to give you the lead, but I gotta give this one to Travis with musicians that have more talent. And you guys all know what happens. We have a three-way tie. We're going 
to a tiebreaker wheel question. Noises. So for anyone who doesn't know the wheel, all of our panelists are going to be asked, I'm going to be asking them the same question. The wheel decides the answer they will defend. So the question is, very in season, what is the best costume that will help you get laid? So we'll go in the order in which you won. So John, Tanner, and then Travis will go first. So John, this is the costume you have to wear. And how will you get laid wearing this costume? <laughs> Teddy, Teddy bear. bear. <laughs> well, that's the number one excuse to have a chick snuggle with you. Like, you keep them safe at night. Every chick wants a cute, cuddly teddy bear. And I, I can be that cute, cuddly teddy bear. You feel me? I got some stuff in. And if you feel me, uh, you know what I'm saying? Walking around. And you know, and you don't really gotta, you don't really gotta uh, do too much. You know, so everybody's gonna want to come up and touch you, feel how soft you are, feel, like love the greatness, want to take pictures with you, and everybody, like I said, wants to sleep with the cute, cuddly teddy bear. So win, win, okay. win. I like that. And Tanner, this is your Halloween costume. You got a Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Ooh. Woman. Mm. <laughs> well, gentlemen, every day we stray further from God's light, and you're about to fuck a black man in a Wonder Woman costume. Uh, damn, it's uh, it's New Orleans. We're on Beale Street, and then we go on, you know, and go over to Carnival, and there's there's more cross dresses, and we're so horny, and God, you're feeling my tits up, and I mean, fuck, we're just, we're insane, we're insane, we're doing coke, and then somebody hands me an actual glass coke, and I'm like, let's use this later on, because I'm a black man in a Wonder Woman costume, goddammit, and the world is, I don't know, I guess, do I have my whip of truth as well, because, uh, you know, that, that, I guess that'd be cool. Obviously. All right, let's do that, I want, and then at the end of the night, uh, I start walking, in midair and they're like holy shit you can float too i'm like nah bitch this is my invisible plane we're gonna we're gonna go up in here floating, you're, okay, you were, you are the woman shit floating on these hoes <laughs> you are wonder actually woman wonder woman <laughs> and, then, and then finally she's like oh where are we gonna do this baby and we go right back to amazonia i show her the big cats i show her how i fucked with aquaman once in that flash uh, paradox and man it's just, it's a whole storyline that you're invited to so yeah yeah, fuck me. I'm Wonder Woman. Okay. I will say, you miss an opportunity to pull the threesome card there, because if you're already cross-dressing, you're already, you know, diversifying. You have a lot more options. <laughs> I'm a queen. There's I only fuck first. one at a time. I'm taking my three minutes, too. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm saying three minutes worth of All time. Right. Right. <laughs> so, Travis, this is your costume. You're a lobster. A lobster? Or right. obviously, because, like, all right, this, this is an easy one, because, like, lobsters, oh, when you lobster. see them in the grocery store, they're always confined in the same way as, like, prisoners are. And, like, you know the prisoners have the following of, like, the girl like Charles Manson, like whatever, all them, they get all these letters. So it's like, you have all these, the, the tape on your claws and then you're like, now I finally get my claws out. So now it's like, bitch, I'm a lobster. You know what I'm saying? Like I can hurt you, but I'm not gonna hurt you. Like the same way, like a, a dangerous prisoner is. So it's like, yeah, I lobster some of the time. Like that's like the verb for when a lobster like bones a, a, a nice bra. So it's like the whole time in the grocery store, I'm looking at you with my beady eyes, you know, and whatnot. And then like, now I finally get a chance at you. So it's like, it's, it's gonna go down. And my one, my one chance with the tape off, <laughs> you better tape this. Cause the, the tape, when the tape comes off, the lobster comes out. Wow, that's hashtag yeah. that. Y'all remember those, y'all remember those verb commercials where it's like verb, it's what you do. It's like lobst, it's what's <laughs> Yeah, I lost it, that bitch. So, <laughs> I lost it, the fuck out of that. Looks, <laughs> so after uh, much to contemplate, it looks like the best costume to get laid in is a teddy bear costume. John oh was laid in and racism. the episode. <laughs> it's either John or the guest. It's so, John, you are tonight's big winner. You have 15 seconds of fame. Shout out, plug, whatever you like. Uh, first of all, shout out to me. And uh, definitely want to shout out to myself. Got to shout out I as well. Uh, but thanks, Tanner, for joining us, man. It's been a great episode. Usually, uh, the producers, they don't fuck with me. <laughs> the directors, they don't fuck with me. <laughs> the, the judges, they don't fuck with me. But I was glad I was able to win this time. Shout out to Kobe, man. Lakers doing what they had to do to seal the deal. Stay right. classy, San Diego. And uh, Tanner, since you are a special guest tonight, I do want you to have an opportunity to shout out, plug whoever you like. Please, the floor is yours. 
Uh, yeah, listen to Anomaly Homily uh, podcast. Uh, it is on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, I've been getting a real big uptick of uh, listeners. I got Roy Wood Jr. on there. I got Timur from uh, the Hulu show Woke. Working on some other guests. Working on some, like, New York, L.A. people. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But, like, it's, it's the best uh, thing I've been doing since uh, COVID. And uh, I'm, I'm having fun with it, man. So, uh, yeah, check out Anomaly Homily for real. Hell, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Tanner. And quick recap of the episode tonight. So it looks like everyone on a championship team does not deserve a ring. It's worth finding something in your kid's room versus your parents' room. And it's more talented to be a musician than a rapper. All right, guys. See you next time. Don't forget to tip your server. What's up, everybody? Thanks for watching Blasphemous Debate. We hope you enjoyed the content, but please, now it's time for you guys to give back to us. Please contribute anything you can by paying your tithes, people. Passing the plate around to everybody. Please contribute anything you can. You can tithe today by liking, following, and subscribing to all BMD content on Facebook, Instagram. You can watch us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify and Apple Music today. And remember, folks, drop a comment below if there's anything you can think of that you want us to debate, and we'll consider it for our next episode, all right? Drop a comment below. We'll try to get into the next episode. You guys stay real out there. Peace.